everyone and welcome back to our SwiftUI crash course. So today we'll be discussing about the text component in SwiftUI. So whenever you want to show some string on a screen, we can use this text element. So whenever you want to show a label, you can use text element directly. So let us open Xcode uh, so we can see it through code. So let's just open Xcode and create a new project. Let's open it. All right, let's create a new Xcode project and we'll name it as a uh, text example. Example. The team and everything will be like this. Interface will be Swift UI, language will be Swift. Core data include test, we don't want it. So let's just click on next and create. All right. All right, so our project is created. And inside the content view, you can see that the image and text are already added in the body. So let's let us just remove it. So we can add it ourselves. Let's just keep it as it is for now. Um, okay, so we'll be getting some error. Let's just add text. And inside this, let's just write down hello, write and claps. So in the right hand side, you can see that the canvas is loading because there were a few errors. That's why the canvas stopped loading. Now that we have fixed it, uh, it should load. Sometimes it may take a while, but yeah. So it's loaded. It took me around 10 to 15 seconds. All right. Um, so yeah, now you can see that we have written down text and in the right hand side, you can see the text in the center of the view. So let's talk about this body and this body is expecting a view. So what if I write down two text? Will it work? So you can see that uh, it created two content views. The hello write a labs, hello write a labs, because it is treating this view differently than the first one. So it is considering it at two different views. So what if we just wanted to keep it like I wanted the text uh, below the uh, first one? So for that we can use these tab. Like we will be discussing this in upcoming lectures and inside this V stack now we can place both of these. So they will be uh, in a vertical order. So V stack is actually a vertical stack. So it will uh, place the components vertically in an order. Okay. So let's just remove this one for now and we will be experimenting with the uh, modifiers let's say if we want to add a text color to this text currently it is black what if i want to change it to red so you can just add foreground color dot red okay so you can see that it has changed to red color and in swift ui we can add modifiers to the components just by appending uh, just by using a dot so if I want to add multiple modifiers I can just enter and add a dot again and it will be applied to the text component quite cool right so what if uh, now I want to make it bold so I can just do it as bold and you can see in the right hand side in the canvas that it has changed to bold and sometimes uh, you might not see the canvas so I will just tell you how you can change it so here in the right top right you can see we have an option here we will click and we can turn off canvas and we can again check it to enable the canvas again so this is how you can turn the canvas on and off all right so let's come back to the text so yeah so foreground color is one modifier to change the text color other one is bold what if I want to make it italic so I can just do it italic and it has changed to italic then there is underline if we want we can also change the font of the uh, text like currently it is using the system default let's say I want to use a different font uh, let's say I want to use uh, a system font of size let's say 25 25 not 235 yeah so this is how we can change the font and if you want to use any custom font like 
uh, pop-ins or something that is not available in the iOS by default. You can use your custom font by using this option. Uh, that's a different topic like we'll be covering it in later part of the course uh, adding a custom font. For now let's just uh, go through the system default ones that we get. And do uh, so there's you can see there are a few more options like body, call out, large title. So what happens is whenever we are giving a font size by ourselves, let's say here we are giving a font size by ourselves, let's, uh, we have given 34. So because uh, Swift UI is a multi-platform language, so what if you are running this TY, uh, running 24, you have changed the text to 24 and it is looking good in iPhone SE let's say and the same project when you run it in an iPad then 24 might seem a little small to you considering the size of the iPad. So that's why Apple has a solution. So instead of using these custom font sizes, we can just write down body, large title and there are multiple others like you can see the list here, body, call out, caption, caption to footnote and many others like large title, sub headline. So these are some types of font that Apple has given by default so that you can use it in your project and these fonts will adjust their size by themselves depending on the size of the screen. So let's say if you are running it on iPad, the font size may be 30, but when you are running the same on an iPhone, the font size might be 15 because it is changing depending on the screen size. So that's one cool feature in SwiftUI. Now let's see how, let's say the text was a little longer. Instead of hello right tech labs, it was how are you? Uh, how's the lectures on SwiftUI Clash course going? So yeah, you can see that the text is adjusting itself in the space that is available to it. Currently, it has all the space on the screen. So it is adjusting itself uh, and expanding itself. Let's say it was a four or five lines. Alright. And what if you wanted it to only restrict it to two lines? Then we have a modifier line limit. And here you can just um, it is expecting a close ranged. So we can just give it zero to two. Sorry, a dot was missing. So so by this we mentioned that the line limit can be from 0 to 2 like the minimum can be 0 and the maximum can be 2 now as you can see the text is shrinking what if uh, we wanted the text to adjust itself under the area that is being provided to its head uh, minimum scale factor so by minimum scale factor we are saying that the text can shrink itself to 20 percent of the current font size to adjust itself in the area that is provided to itself. So you can see that the text has shrunk in to adjust itself in two lines. If I had made it like 0.05, then also see that the text is similar to somewhat 20% of the text. What if I made it like 0.8? So you can see the text uh, font got a little smaller, like it has reduced itself to 80% of it but not less than that because we have given the minimum value to 80% so, so let's discuss the next one the next one is baseline offset so this baseline offset actually adds uh, spacing between two lines let's just remove this underline so we can see it in more detail yeah so you can see the spacing of 10 between the lines. Let's just also change the line limit to 10 so that the text can expand itself. Okay. So the baseline offset is 10. If you make it 20, you can see the, the spacing between the text will increase. And similarly, if we want to increase the spacing between the, for, uh, between the alphabets, we can use kerning. Inside this, we can give value as 10. So you can see that the alphabets have a spacing of 10 between each of them 
um, and it's not looking good so let's just reduce it again to 1 this is somewhat better let's just make it 0 0.5 yeah this is better yeah so you can uh, like play with the values and whatever uh, customization that you like you can keep it so these are some of the options and what if like the current alignment of the text is leading what if you want to make it center so you can do multi-line text alignment and change it to center so you can see the text has aligned itself to center yeah, yeah. so these are some of the modifiers that are available there are many more like you can go through the documentation to learn about each of them like i will add a link to the documentation so that if you want to explore more modifiers you can go through that documentation so i hope you understood how we can use a component in swift ui and how we can add modifiers to it and so i'll see you guys in next video and yes if you haven't subscribed already please do subscribe and keep liking the videos thank you